welcome. In the last video, we took our first look at option pricing. In this video, we will continue with option pricing by taking a closer look at volatility. Volatility can be broken into two parts, historic volatility and implied volatility. Historic volatility is the volatility of the periodic daily returns. The periodic daily return is the rate that price changes each day using continuous compounding. Each day, the price of a stock is the previous day's price times E raised to some value. The value that E is raised to is the rate of change for that day, in other words, the periodic daily return. Historic volatility refers to the standard deviation of the periodic daily returns. The standard deviation shows the rate of dispersion or how spread out the periodic daily returns are from the average of all the periodic daily returns. In short, historic volatility is the standard deviation of the periodic daily returns over a one year period. For more on this, please watch my video on the periodic daily return and my three video series on the standard deviation. Implied volatility shows the market's opinion of the stock's potential moves. In other words, implied volatility shows what the market implies about the stock's volatility in the future. When implied volatility is high, then the market thinks that the stock has potential for large price movements in either direction before the option expires. When implied volatility is low, then the market thinks that the price of the stock will move less by option expiration. Implied volatility is affected by things like upcoming earnings reports and upcoming economic announcements. For instance, in the days leading up to an earnings report, implied volatility will increase due to the uncertainty of what the results of the report will be. And after the earnings are announced and the results are known, implied volatility will decrease. Volatility is the largest factor in determining option pricing. Let's say that there are two stocks that are both priced $10 per share. One of these stocks goes up and down about 1% or 10 cents each day, and the other stock goes up and down about 3% or 30 cents each day. Let's say that a trader buys $12 call options on both stocks. This locks in a preset buy price of $12, so this trader is hoping that both stocks rise above $12 before the options expire. The stock that moves around 3% each day on average has a better chance of rising over $12 than the stock that only moves 1% each day on average. Therefore, the option for the stock that moves 3% a day will be priced much higher than the option for the stock that only moves 1% a day. In other words, the higher the volatility, the more the cost of the option. Volatility is used to form a range around the expected path for price to create a continuous range of probability for what the actual rate of change in price will be. By combining some basic assumptions about the markets with some basic laws and theories of statistics, we can develop an expected path for price. In other words, we can determine the path for price that has the greatest odds of occurring. Even though we know price probably will not follow that path, it is the path that has a better chance of occurring than any other path. Therefore, we call it the expected path for price. We can take that expected path of price along with the volatility and form what is known as a probability distribution of what the future path of price will be. In other words, we take the expected path of price and the volatility and form a range around the expected path that tells us the probability or odds of any path occurring. We can use this to determine the probability of what the future price will be, not only for pricing options but also for things like Monte Carlo simulation, which is used to determine possible future outcomes of price, and value at risk, which is used to determine things like expected maximum risk of loss. In the last video, I mentioned that option pricing only has five inputs, or six if the stock pays a dividend. The strike price is fixed, but the stock price, the volatility, and the amount of time left until the option expires are constantly changing and interest rates may change at any time. As these values change, they affect the price of the option. In the next video, we will begin to look at how these changing values affect an option's price by taking our first look at the Greeks. See you then. Hello and welcome. In this video, we will take a closer look at Delta. 
In the last video, I mentioned that the delta is the rate of change in an option's value when there is a change in the price of the underlying stock. More formally, the delta is the rate of change in an option's value with respect to changes in price of the underlying stock. It is a bit of an oversimplification, but a simple way of thinking of it is, when the price of the stock changes one dollar, the delta is the percent of one dollar that the option will change in value. For instance, if a call option has a delta of 0 0.6 and the stock increases a dollar in value, then the option will increase 60 cents in value. If a call option has a delta of 0 0.4 and the stock increases a dollar in value, then the option will increase 40 cents in value. If a put option has a delta of negative 0 0.3 and the stock decreases a dollar in value, then the put option will increase 30 cents in value. If a put option has a delta of negative 0 0.7 and the stock decreases a dollar in value, then a put option will increase 70 cents in value. I also mentioned in the last video that the delta is the hedge ratio. Let's look at an example. Let's say that a trader has 300 shares of stock and he is worried that the price of the stock may drop. Therefore, the trader buys five put options that have a delta of negative 0.6. At this point, he is delta hedged. In other words, if the price of the stock drops a dollar, his 300 shares of stock drop a total of $300 in value. However, the delta of negative 0.6 means that for each dollar drop in the price of the stock, each option contract increases 60% of $100 or $60. The trader owns five puts, so his stock decreased in value $300, but his put options increased $300. In other words, the option contracts increased in value the exact same amount that the stock decreased in value, so the trader was hedged against loss. If you remember from my last video, once the price of the stock does change, the delta changes as well. As the stock goes up and down in value, the delta increases and decreases. This means that once the stock price moves, a once hedged position is no longer completely hedged. To maintain a hedge, the ratio of option contracts to shares of stock must be readjusted by increasing or decreasing the amount of shares of stock or increasing and decreasing the number of option contracts so that the hedge ratio is once again balanced. Delta hedging was one of the keys to the Black-Scholes formula. The theory was that if one can theoretically continue to keep readjusting the ratio of option contracts to shares of stock on a continuous basis, then one could be constantly hedged and theoretically remove all risk of loss. Therefore, if that is true, then a bunch of theories must apply, or one can place offsetting trades and make more money than one can make on a risk-free investment such as a U.S. government bond without risk of loss. Delta hedging must be adjusted for more than just the changes in the price of the stock, as the delta also changes when there is a change in volatility, interest rates, or the time left until the option expires. Trading a hedge position is called delta neutral trading and will be the subject of a later video. An options delta is derived using probability. I mentioned in the first video that one can create a probability or odds curve of what the future value of the stock will be. For a call option, the delta is derived from a probability distribution of what the future value of the stock will be multiplied by the probability that the stock will be above the option strike price. Put another way, if and only if the option expires in the money, the delta is a probability distribution of how far into the money the option will be. So that is a bit more on an options delta. In the next video, we will compare buying a call option to selling a put option. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome. In this video, we will continue our discussion of comparing buying a call option to selling a put option. Let's compare buying a call option to selling a put option using SLV the silver ETF as an example. At the time of making this video, SLV is currently trading for $20.65 a share. Let's compare buying the $21.50 call to selling the $20 put. If the trader buys the $21.50 call option, his total risk is $0.40 cents a share. His possible profit is unlimited as theoretically the price of SLV can climb to any price. 
Therefore, there is a much greater possible reward than the amount he is risking to lose. However, for the trade to be profitable, the price of SOV has to move above $21.90 within the next month. This trader is hoping that the volatility over the next month is enough that price moves above $21.90 faster than the time runs out for the option. The current price of SOV is $20.65, so the odds or chances of this occurring are not very good, which is why the option only costs $0.40. Cents. If the trader sells the $20 put, he has paid $0.40 cents up front. $0.40 cents a share is his maximum possible profit on the trade. However, his maximum possible loss is theoretically $20 a share, minus the premium of $0.40 cents that he was paid up front for the option, as he is committing himself to buy SOV for $20 a share, and the price of a stock or ETF can theoretically drop all the way down to zero. Therefore, this trade means that the trader is risking a possible large loss, yet his maximum possible gain is only $0.40 cents a share. The small gain versus the possible large loss is offset by the fact that the odds or chances of any loss occurring is very small. If the trader buys the 2150 call option, the price of SOV has to move from the current price of 2065 to over 2190 before the option expires in about a month. If the price of SOV is below 2190, the trade loses money. After the trader places his trade, Volatility becomes his friend because an increase in volatility increases the chance of price moving to where the trade is profitable. However, time is his enemy as each day his options lose in value from time decay as time moves closer until his option expires. If the trader sells the $20 put option, the price of SOV just needs to stay above 1960 until the option expires. If the price of SOV does not move at all, if the price rises, or if the price drops down some but not all the way down to 1960, then the trade is profitable. For this trade, time is the trader's friend. However, volatility is his enemy as an increase in volatility increases his chance of the trade moving to where he will lose money. If the trader buys the call option, the price of SOV has to make a significant move in one direction before time runs out for the trade to be profitable. If the trader sells the put option for the trade to be profitable, the price of SLV has to not make a significant move in one direction while time is running out. The option trader is constantly weighing the possible profit versus the possible risk versus the probability of occurrence or outcome. Remember that one can choose to be an option buyer or an option seller. For instance, the trader could start a trade by buying the 2150 call, and he could start a trade by selling the 2150 call. He could start a trade by selling the $20 put and he could start a trade by buying the $20 put. Therefore, options are necessarily priced based on probability or odds of occurrence. As we move next into discussing option strategies, it is important to always keep the possible profit versus possible risk versus the probability of occurrence in mind. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.